As the Army's personnel director, I have responsibility for generating Army personnel policies. This encompasses recruiting ambition, personnel support to our people and their families in service, through career education and also administration. I've therefore been asked to speak about attracting the right people, maximising talent and also retention. Now, given that I've held the personal appointment for a week after 30 years of service, I thought that the best way to fulfil this remit was to be talk you through my own glorious career. Um, however, I do aspire to hold the appointment for a further week, so I'll spare you. Instead, I'll be highlighting the British Army's coherent plan to become the national exemplar in the attraction and the employment of talent, and therefore perhaps enable Harlan's challenge of a brains-based approach. Now, attracting the right people is a constant challenge for a volunteer army that aspires to win on every outing and be revered in the nation that it exists to serve, whilst, of course, only investing that which is absolutely necessary in terms of resource into recruiting. Our target audience is limited by such constraints as age. We're therefore seeking the best of a limited population, which comes from having an appealing offer, getting that offer to the target audience, and then encouraging that audience to examine the offer, apply, and of course, see the process through. It's all about getting through, and institutional culture is critical to this what you sound and what you look like. If the culture is not perceived to be right, the recruiting return will be significantly damaged. The British Army has been challenging historic norms, for example, in the employment of members of the lesbian, gay, transgender communities, as well as women. But the pace of change has been conservative. The, the context continues to change around about us, and we do recognise that we've not gone as far as we need to. For example, women are unrepresented in our army today at only 8.7% of the trained strength, and similarly those from minority communities. And whilst in this area there has been an improvement, currently only 4.2% of our total strength is UK black, Asian, minority, ethnic. And it's our experience that these are hugely talented segments of the population. On average, the pass rate at Army officer selection is 7% higher for females than it is for males. We also know that the number of white males, our traditional recruit, is going to dwindle by 20% in the next 15 years. We're therefore very focused on broadening our recruiting through better targeting, and we've proved that we can achieve success for having focused carefully. We see a 34% uplift in female applications in this year to May when compared to the previous 12-month period. Man proving oneself has been a defining idea for the British Army for a very long time, and it's also an aspect of our personnel policies that civilian businesses regard highly. We're justifiably proud of the opportunities we offer. The Army is the nation's largest supplier of apprenticeships, with 18,000 soldiers on 40 different apprenticeships as I speak today. But we also recognise the need to continually develop and adapt if we're to identify and nurture the agile intellect needed for success on the battlefield today. Over the next few years, we will introduce a knowledge, skill and experience framework and in revise the employment fields around which we construct our people's careers. And from 2017, we'll be using contemporary testing and evaluation techniques for senior captains to vector individuals into the most appropriate fields and identify those with particular potential. This is far earlier than present and represents earlier specialisation. Concurrently, 
will be making sure that we continue to provide focused through career development, including for the highest ranks. For example, with 360 degree assessments for more senior officers from the end of this year. We also recognise that behaviours within structures are absolutely critical to talent development. Individual empowerment and accountability are particular points of effort, with the aim of offering more responsibility earlier by exploiting flatter structures and greater delegations. For as, we, for as we have proved in the field this century, our people are up for it, ready for it, and hungry for it. Turning to retention, the first point to make is that it's about retaining the right number of the right people. Having a sustainable Manning model is therefore a crucial start point. But from there, we and our people are particularly looking for more flexibility. We intend to be far more open-minded about some of the constraints that have traditionally characterised the military career offering a broader spectrum of other than full-time employment opportunities. We will continue to offer extensive contracts to our reserve personnel, effectively facilitating a form of lateral entry. And the concept of flexible duty contracts for regulars, whereby they will be able to work less days per week than is currently the norm while still remaining a regular soldier. This will be tested in the autumn and will be rolled out from April of next year. Now, recognising that our behaviour and institutional reputation are significant influences on both retention and recruiting, we're also reviewing how we express our values and standards and implementing a new leadership code, and that will be rolled out in September of this year. In our refreshed approach, we therefore understand the strong interdependency of recruiting, development, and retention activities. If you recruit and develop, you will retain. Similarly, you'll recruit if you develop and retain. We're therefore in the process of enacting a series of personnel initiatives that will impact in all three areas simultaneously, ensure coherence, and also make sure that our strategy is well understood. And as CGS highlighted this morning, the Maximising Talent Programme will deliver our new career structures, it will secure the widest possible talent, and it will also get at the failings in our current culture. And these will nest within the Army Personnel Strategy, which links six lines of development. Manning the Army, identifying and engaging with society, harnessing talent from wider society, taking a professional approach, leaders who set and live up to the Army's professional standards, and finally maximising productivity and sustainable cost reduction. So what might good look like in the future? We believe that it's an employment offer that resonates with all sectors of society and is attractive to those in our target audience who would do well in the army. It is then practices and behaviours that are less rigid and thus provide more opportunities to develop the balance of generalists and specialists we need for future success and allows individuals to balance their personal priorities with that of military service more, effective, more effectively than is the case at the present. It's also an institution that is diverse and inclusive. It is our ambition to be recognised as a national leader in employment practice. It is unfair to expect universal success immediately, as there is a degree of cultural development and transition that's required to facilitate it. But how we do with flexible working the minority communities and the female community will be key indicators of our progress and our attainment.